So hello and a very warm welcome to all our viewers today. We have a very interesting episode of Open Up Airways today where we try and help you understand your lungs and what you can do to take care of them better. I am Dr. Arman Haq. I am a consultant pulmonologist at College of Medicine and JNM Hospital in Kalyani. And I am very lucky to be joined today by eminent and very famous pulmonologist Dr. Indriyal Haldar. So sir, I will request you to please say a few words to introduce yourself to our audience. So thank you Arman for the podcast here. So I am Dr. Indriyal Haldar. I am the professor and head of the Department of Pulmonary Medicine. College of Medicine, JNM Hospital, Kollani, Nodia. So in 2025, as of today, COPD remains the second most leading cause of death in India. This is an alarming statistic and we hope with this podcast, we can elaborate on COPD, why it happens, what we can do to prevent it. And we'll talk in details about exacerbations, which are colloquially called the lung attack. So this sets the agenda for today's meeting. So I'd like to start by asking our esteemed panelist, Dr. Haldar, sir, a few words about COPD in 2025. So COPD is a chronic respiratory disease caused by injury to the airways due to noxious particles, smoking and non-smoking also like biomass fuel, occupational exposures and pollution, which causes inflammation and narrowing of the airways and also the alveoli so that Ultimately, less air is going into the alveoli and the oxygen from the alveoli is not going to your blood. Everybody knows that smoking tobacco causes COPD, but what is non-smoking COPD? So, just a few decades back, we thought that COPD is caused mainly because of the smoking. But now, we are seeing a lot of non-smoking COPD. So, non-smoking COPD may be because of the biomass fuel exposure, which is a huge burden here in India where wood and other biomass fuel is being used, occupation and also sometimes infections like tuberculosis may produce COPD. Long drawn asthma for a prolonged period when it is not treated in the proper way may also transform into COPD. So these are the some form of non-smoking COPD. Can you just tell us what the basic difference is between an asthma and a COPD? So asthma is basically a genetic disease. It starts from early life. It has a waxing and waning. It is because of the trigger. So they are sometimes very good and sometimes bad when there is a trigger, there is a narrowing of the airways. But oxygenation from the alveoli is normal. In COPD, there is airway narrowing because of a noxious particle injury to the airways and also the alveoli. And it is permanent in that way. So COPD caused because of smoking or some other insult, it is a permanent narrowing of the airways. And there are bad days, good days, when bad days means there are exacerbation, good days means they are not in the exacerbation and they are having those symptoms and are adapted to the daily day-to-day -day activities. So it sounds very scary. So is COPD treatable? So COPD is treatable and there is justified optimism at any stage of the disease. So it is preventable and treatable. Preventable because if you stop smoking early or do not smoke, if you stop exposure to biomass exposure or occupational exposure, it can be prevented. Treatable because we have very good drugs for them and we know how to manage those patients even when they are symptomatic at the end part of their COPD also. So, so what is the most important step a patient can take to tell their family member or for themselves that what you should not do, so you should not get COPD in your life? So smoking cessation or at least they should not start smoking in the peer pressures are there and sometimes because of some other reason they may be taking to smoking don't smoke exposure to biomass fuel has to be avoided and we have very good plants in india where now we have lpg gases so diesel exhaust and pollution is also rising but now that we are moving toward less pollution and we know how to prevent pollution that is important infection like tuberculosis should be treated properly and in the right time asthma should be treated properly in the right time so that doesn't progress to COPD. So sir, the topic of today is exacerbations. Now, colloquially people know that this is a lung attack or an acute worsening of symptoms. But can you explain what exactly is a COPD exacerbation and how does it differ from the daily problems that a patient of COPD is having? Arman, you rightly told that this is a lung attack. People are scared about the heart attack when there is a myocardial infarction in an ischemic heart disease. In patients of obstructive airway diseases, in COPD, when there is an exacerbation, it's called a lung attack. So what the patient of COPD have, they have cough, wheeze, shortness of breath. So the, when there is an increase in the cough, 
wheeze and the shortness of breath which is above the daily things that they are having and that requires interventions it is called an exacerbation how is it different when it is increased to an extent that it really requires some form of medication or visiting the doctor we call it an exacerbation or a lung attack so thank you sir so why is it important for a patient of COPD to understand that I am having an exacerbation or I am going to have an exacerbation and what will happen if they ignore this signs and symptoms? What would that look like? It is just like a myocardial infarction in ischemic heart disease or heart attack. It's a lung attack or an exacerbation of COPD. They should recognize it and understand it early. If they are not doing that, the symptoms will increase and ultimately there will be less of oxygen in the blood, more of carbon dioxide in the blood and ultimately land up in respiratory failure. They have to be admitted in the ICU, ventilated and they may in fact ultimately succumb from it. Not only that, if subject who is having recurrent exacerbation, there is a deterioration in the lung functions. When I mean lung function, that means the amount of air that can be inhaled or the way that can be exhaled will be deteriorating. With more of exacerbation, it will not come back to the normal baseline state when it was before the exacerbation and with repeated exacerbation, the lung function will deteriorate to such an extent that they may be hampering their daily day-to-day -day activities. So prevention of exacerbation, understanding exacerbation at the right time is very important for the patients. So sir, uh, is this also true for an asthma exacerbation? Is it this serious or is it not so serious? So again, asthma exacerbation, also there is narrowing of the airways, there is less of air entering into the lungs and ultimately if this goes on persisting and not treated, less of oxygen in the blood and later on carbon dioxide may increase and may, the patient may land up in respiratory failure or in an ICU. But if the lung function deterioration which is seen in COPD may not be to this, that extent in cases of asthma. And asthma management with an exacerbation is very well if you treat it in the early part of an exacerbation. So sir, how will a patient understand that they are having an exacerbation? What are some common signs or symptoms that they themselves can recognize at home and perhaps they can speak with you or another pulmonologist? So in patients of COPD, they are normally having cough, shortness of breath, wheezing with or without expectoration. When there is an increase in the amount of cough, shortness of breath and expectoration or the expectoration become purulent, thick mucoid or they are having fever along with it, they should understand that they are probably having an exacerbation. And in asthma exacerbation also, yes, they should be knowing because of some trigger, there is sudden onset of increase in the shortness of breath, they may be cough, chest tightness, maybe sometimes they are unable to speak a word. So they should be understanding when there is an increase of the daily day to day symptoms, they should understand that probably they are going into an exacerbation. Thank you sir, is there any test which the patient can perform themselves at home to know that I am at risk of an exacerbation or I am currently in an exacerbation? So this is very important for asthma patients. So normally on home care monitoring for asthma, we give them a peak flow meter. Right. Sir. So where they are expected to blow in the morning and in the evening and see what is the peak flow meter reading. So if there is a decrease in the peak flow meter reading, what we do is that we give them a green zone, yellow zone and a red zone. So when they are in the green zone, that means they are in the safe part. When they are in the yellow zone, we have them some written asthma action plan and tell them what to do. Definitely in the red zone, they should be visiting a doctor early so that we can take the patient in the proper track and recover them from their exacerbation. So sir, for COPD patients, what are some common reasons or triggers which may cause an exacerbation? So in COPD, we think that infection is probably the most common cause of exacerbation. Sometimes increase in the pollution may also cause an infection and then exacerbation. So these are the two important things we think of the reasons for an exacerbation of COPD. Because our air quality index is really deteriorating, are you finding more exacerbations in your daily clinical practice? Definitely, people staying in major highways or in major cities when they come, they have an increased risk of COPD exacerbation and they are having COPD exacerbation. This is because of the diesel exhaust and the pollutions from different factories and uh, also from different fumes that they are having. Absolutely. So exacerbation is increasing because of that. 
And so what about asthma? Are the triggers the same or are they different? Because we know asthma means allergy colloquially. So asthma is somewhat different in the triggers. Here, the allergens probably are very important. Seasonal changes, sudden change in the climate, rainy season or a cloudy atmosphere or an increase in the pollen maybe or increase in the allergens may sometimes cause an asthma exacerbation. Sometimes exercise, sometimes infection also plays a role, viral infection mainly or it also has an emotional component where emotions may also increase being a psychosomatic disease emotion may sometimes increase an asthma attack. So what are some things our viewers and patients can do practically in their homes and daily so they can avoid a COPD exacerbation? So when it comes to infection, we will be telling our patients to take the right vaccination and the two most important vaccination that we are suggesting is the influenza vaccine, yearly the quadrivalent one and the pneumococcal vaccination. Till now we are providing pneumococcal conjugate vaccine and the polysaccharide vaccine. The conjugate vaccine 13 valent is to be taken first two months in between one year by the polysaccharide vaccine. So vaccination is very important. So they should be avoiding places where there are infection during the times of increased pollution. They may be keeping their doors and windows closed. And if they have the facility to move on to a place where it is less polluted, it will be better for occupational exposure may also be avoided. Smoking and biomass fuel exposure as already discussed to you they should be avoided in order to prevent an exacerbation. So second and tobacco smoke is also to be taken into account. So sir, we saw during the COVID and the pandemic and everybody was in isolation, we saw a drastic reduction in the number of exacerbations and that is probably because everybody was wearing masks and staying at home. So do you recommend everybody should wear masks daily? So this is not a practical thing that the patient can do. But definitely when they are in a crowded place for patients of COPD or when they are going to meet some of the person who is really suffering from a viral infection, that is the right time they should be wearing a mask. Absolutely. And what about asthma, sir? What, uh, what can a patient do to prevent an asthma, acute asthma attack or a exacerbation of asthma? That asthma exacerbation is caused mainly by the allergens. Right. So they should know the right way to prevent allergens. So in their indoor allergens, the most common indoor allergen being dermatophytes, dust. They should know how to be, make their room dust free. Carpet should not be there. Bed sheets, bed covers they should be boiled or some burial method like uh, coverings are there for preventing dermatophytes, old books and some way when they are cleaning their rooms, it may be done by a vacuum cleaning or wet mopping may be done. Molds at least should be prevented, pets should not be there in their bedroom. So this is important as smoke, smoking and other form of smoking like mosquito repellent which is also very dangerous. Agarbatis are also triggers for that and that is to be avoided and viral infection may be one of the cause and that can be prevented definitely by the influenza vaccine or even they should also be using a mask when they are visiting a place where maybe which may be crowded or when they are meeting a patient who is suffering from a viral infection. So, so since asthma and COPD are chronic diseases, I'm sure all of your patients are on medication for a long time. So are there regular treatments which this patient should be on to prevent an exacerbation? So in order to prevent exacerbation, the first and most important thing is that compliance to the medication. The device and technique of the inhalation should be very good. They should not miss up that dose. The second thing is about vaccination. I have repeatedly stressing of vaccination and COPD. In fact, there are five vaccinations which are to be taken as per the recommendation. The COVID, which normally we have already given to most of the patient, the yearly influenza vaccine, quadrivalent influenza vaccine, the pneumococcal vaccine, the Singritz vaccine, and the Tdap vaccine. The vaccine for the whooping cough, which is normally given, is five vaccinations which are there, which can prevent a lot of exacerbation as per the guidelines and as per the recommendation. In asthma exacerbation, again the compliance, the inhaler device, the technique is very very important. We have a lot of patients who are in our viewing right now who are afraid of inhalers. So can you just give a short message for them why they should not be afraid of an inhaler? So this has been told repeatedly that inhalers are very safe, not only for the adults but for the children. So it's only a small amount of drug that is going down to the airways to the target place. It is not going in your bloodstream or very 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 less amount is going to your bloodstream. So it is not causing the harm unless a, the medication goes to your bloodstream, reaches the brain or the liver in that way it will not cause harm. So it is acting locally. 
one it is very safe in children also initially there was a thought that it growth may be hampered but i'm telling you the disease will cause more of growth hampered or a growth velocity reduction rather than the medication itself so even the steroid medication if used in the right way and they can wash off their mouth and oral cavity it will cause no harm in the therapeutic dose that we give to the patients so i think this is important because the psychological block is one of the main reasons for patients having exacerbations later on so so i think for the most practical question for our viewers let's say for copd we have a patient who's starting to experience symptoms of an exacerbation or a flare of their problems so what should they do at home and when should they realize that okay i have to go to a doctor right now for copd exacerbation recognizing the exacerbation the right time is very important so as i told you that when there is an increase in the cough we shortness of breath which is more than the normal day, day to day uh, this should be increasing the dose of this short acting beta 2 agonist that has been given probably to them in that way Absolutely. but it is better for copd exacerbation to visit the doctor because the doctor will find out whether it is an infective etiology or not and we can give the proper antibiotics sometimes steroid may also have to be started in the right time so if right time is not taken into account it will be increasing and sometimes they may require an admission so there are many differential diagnosis for this so for a copd patient when they are having this kind of symptoms it is better that they visit the doctor in the right time and early one because we have to start the correct medication two because it may be because of some other reason which the doctor can identify we may be doing some other tests for example a simple ecg and chest x-ray in many of the times may be identifying most of the differentials and we can put you in the right track but what about asthma sir is it any better or easier or is it also requiring the patient to come to the doctor so for asthma attack i'm telling you asthma exacerbations we normally have an asthma action plan written asthma action, written asthma action plan Absolutely. to them sir. so what is that so they know when they're having increased symptoms or sometimes they're given a peak flow meter where they know that they are in the yellow or in the red zone they understand that and first thing that they can do is in two ways so we normally put the patient on smart regime that is a single inhaler both for the daily day to day and sometimes when they're increasing symptoms they increase the same inhaler so what they do where they're taking they are taking two pops in the morning two pops in the evening when they are having an increase in the symptoms the written asthma action plan tell them to increase the dose of the inhalation so they increase the dose of the inhaler from two pops twice daily to two pops four times daily so if they are relieved it is good if they are not relieved then if in the written asthma action plan they are given to start steroid they may start the steroid but again if they are not recovered with that it is better that they should visit the doctor early absolutely otherwise we use a the blue inhaler the short acting beta 2 agonist they are taking one inhaler in the morning two to two, two pops in the evening two pops and they are given a blue inhaler which is contains the short acting beta 2 agonist we tell them to increase the dose of the short acting beta 2 agonist so if they are not relieved with that and the symptoms are not recovered or by the peak flow meter you are seeing you are still in the yellow and in the red zone don't delay the importance of using the medication regularly is stressed upon and also stressed upon is vaccination identify your exacerbation early either take medication that has been written by your doctor or visit your doctor earliest so that it doesn't progress much so thank you so thank you all our viewers and if you have any doubts please reach out in the comments and we'll get back to you so thank you arman for the thank meeting. you sir